Hello, hello. Um, I am recording at about 7.40 um, Monday night. How about Popeyes? Um, and uh, we're going to get started straight into the lesson. No warm up today, um, just so that we can already get started with the math. Okay. So today we're going to be focusing on factoring polynomials. You'll actually see that this is going to be what we cover for the next um, two days. If I see you on, um, if, if I have, if you have me for fifth period, it's actually going to be for the next four days. Okay. But, um, for, for periods like 2A, 2B, 3B, 3A, so on and so forth, those, um, for y'all, it'll be, uh, two, two days, two period days that we meet up. Anywho, um, so let's get started. The first step when we're trying to factor is to try and see if we can divide out a GCF. Um, I wanna give y'all a reminder of what the GCF is. So what we do is we want to look for what all the terms have in common. So for all terms have in common. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna factor that out. Uh, that's the same thing as dividing, essentially. We've, we've practiced this before, but you're going to factor that out, whatever that GCF is, from all the terms. Okay, so say, for example, I have x squared plus x. Well, x squared and x, they both have an x in common, so I could factor it out by taking out that x, and I'd be left with x plus 1, okay? All right, second step um, is going to be to look for special patterns. We are going to be talking about um, one special pattern that we would have seen last semester, which is the difference of squares. And then the other two are going to be brand spanking new ones. So the difference of squares formula, it's a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b times a plus b. Looks like it froze. I'm gonna give it a time, give it some time to catch up. Okay, there we go. Not frozen anymore. Perfect. Um, next is going to be difference of cubes. So this is the new one. Um, we are going to have that the formula is a cubed minus b cubed is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared okay our c is going to be sum of cubes again this is a new one sum when you think of sum think of addition so we're going to have cubes where we're dealing with something to the third power plus because it's being summed up it's being added to the other thing that's a cube this is the same as writing a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared, okay? So these are the formulas that you will need to have written down um, in order to work on a lot of these problems, okay? Um, once you've looked for special patterns and you've applied that, the third one that you'll want to do is you'll want to... Um, check for any trinomials. Remember trinomials, they come in the form a x squared plus b x plus c. And you can actually factor a trinomial by using the x method. So we're going to factor using the x method. And at times they, we may even need to use the x method plus the split the middle method, okay? Um, Let's put a refresher here. So at the top should be a times c, bottom should be b, and then those would be the two um, pieces that we're wanting to find. Okay. Apologize. It looks like my iPad's being a little laggy, so I'm going to try to keep an eye on that. All right. Um, the fourth step, which is factor by grouping, we are going to talk about that um, in the next video. Uh, so today we're only going to be focusing on steps one through three. Right. Okay. So let's actually apply these three steps to these 
nine problems. To, um, again, next time we're in class, we'll go over the back side. So today's focus is just the front side. Let's look at that x squared minus 81. Um, first step again is to find the GCF. If I look at that x squared and that 81, they don't have anything common except for one. So that's our GCF. Now we need to look for special patterns. Here I'm going to find that this is actually um, a difference, right? Because we have that subtraction sign. It's a difference of squares. And I can tell this because of that x squared and that 81. Um, if I were to, to write what my a and b are for my formula, right? The formula that we talked about up here. My A would be X and my B would be my nine because nine squared is 81 and X squared is X squared. So um, that is our answer for this one. Let me actually change this up. There we go. Okay. So with this in mind, I should be able to rewrite this polynomial as X minus nine times X plus nine. All right, now I'm dealing with x to the third power. So we might have some type of cube. Um, and here I have 125. So we might be dealing with a cube as well. We might be dealing specifically with a sum of cubes because here I see an addition sign. But I don't know for sure because we haven't listed out the cubes of numbers yet. So let's do that here at the top, okay? Here we'll write the perfect cubes and see what we get. So we would get one, if we were to do one cubed, two cubed is eight, three cubed is 27, four cubed is 64, five cubed is 125, six cubed is 216, seven cubed is 343, eight cubed, oops, eight cubed is um, 512, 9 cubed is 729, and 10 cubed is 1,000, okay? So here are some cubes. If I look at that 125, is that 125 a cube? Well, yeah, we see it right here. So um, we are, in fact, dealing with a sum of cubes. So we'll need to use that sum of cubes formula that's right about here, okay? But first, I need to know what my a cubed is and what my b cubed is. Um, so a is x because x cubed is x cubed. And then b, I need to find a value, a number that when I cube it, it gives me 125. Well, we just talked about it up here. 5 cubed gives me 125. So my b value is 5. Okay, so now looking at this formula of sum of cubes, I would want to write it as a plus b, so that would be x plus 5. And then I would put um, that a squared, so that's x squared um, minus a, which is x times b, which is 5, plus b squared, which is 5 squared. But this isn't as simplified as it can be. We can actually simplify to make it look nicer. So let's do just that. We would end up getting x plus 5. And in the other set of parentheses, we'd be able to write x squared minus 5x plus 25. Okay. Um, the other step that I forgot to check is to see if these pieces are more factorable. Now, if you look here, these are linear um, or they're, they're binomials that are linear. So you can't simplify that anymore. Um, this is also not factorable. And if we try to look at that and create the X method, we'll also see that um, this is also not factorable as well. So this is as simplified as it can be. We're done so with, um, with this problem right here, okay? Should probably highlight this one too and box it. Okay, let's move on to this next one. So if I look here, I see a cube. So 
I'm either dealing with a difference of cubes or a sum of cubes. If I look right there, I see a subtraction sign. So if it's going to be anything, it would need to be um, difference of cubes. The reason why is because the GCF, right? The GCF is one. I also should have probably done the GCF over here as well. GCF, I found that it was one. I keep st skipping steps. Don't do the same mistake that I keep on doing. Okay, our GCF is one. So then we move on to special patterns. And now we can say, hey, this is more than likely a difference of cubes situation. But I need to know what my A and I need to know what my B is for it, right? So here, difference of cubes, that's that eight, right? So we'd have at least two cubed, right? So two and then x. If we do two x cubed, that's going to give me eight x cubed, okay? And then let's see, what number when I cube it is going to give me 27? Well, three is. So then my A and my B, oops, my A and my B are going to be 2x and that three. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's um, now use our difference of cubes formula, which is right here, that second one, to write our answer. So it would be um, 2x minus 3 times, again, we're using this second one right here. We're using that second one. So we're going to write 2x squared plus a times b plus b squared, okay? Um, then from here, we're going to see if we can simplify this, possibly even factor it some more if need be. We'll have 2x minus 3. This will be 4x squared plus 6x plus 9. If I look here and I try to go through the process using that X method, um, we would set it up as nine times four, which is 36 and then six, but there are no two numbers that when I multiply it together, it gives me 36. And when I add them together, it gives me six. So this is actually not further factorable. So because of that, this is my final answer, okay? Let's move on to 9x squared. If I look at this power, it's to the second power, which means um, if I'm going to use anything, if I'm going to use any special pattern, it would be a difference of squares. But before I do that, I need to check to see what my GCF is because maybe that'll help. My GCF, does it have anything else in common outside of 1? Nope. My GCF is 1. So that means we need to see if that difference of squares is actually going to help us factor out this problem. So here I would have, um, I would need to have an A and I need to have a B value. So what value when I square it is going to give me 9x squared? If you said 3x, you are correct. Okay. And then right here, what value when I square it is going to give me 1? Well, 1 is. So that means that my B value is 3x. I mean, my A value is 3x and my B value is 1. So if I were to use this formula, the difference of squares formula, which is A minus B times A plus B, I should be able to set it up nicely. It should be 3x minus 1 and 3x plus 1. If I were to check, oops, if I were to check each of these sections right here, these are not factorable. So they are as simplified as can be. 27x cubed plus 64. What is my GCF here? Well, 27 and 64, they don't really have anything common. So my GCF would be one. So now I need to see if there's any special patterns that could help. If 
I look at the power, it's to the third power. So I'm going to deal with cubes potentially. Um, and then if I look at the sign, it's addition. So it should be sum of cubes, if anything. So sum of cubes. But now it's time to verify. If it's going to be sum of cubes, I need to know what my A value is and what my B value is. My A would be sum value cubed. And that needs to give me 27x cubed. Is there a value that you can think of that would give me 27x cubed? If you guys know, um, let me know. Or write it down, not let me know. You guys can't even respond to this right now. Um, sorry, my brain is like slowly draining. It's almost 8 p.m. Uh, okay, so that's my A value. My B value, it should essentially be given by cubing some number and that'll give me 64 so what number when i square it gives me 64 if you guys put four you're correct okay so then my a value is 3x and my b value is four i can now use the sum of cubes formula which is again up here sum of cubes that last one to help me set up my um, my, my, uh, factored polynomial. So I'll put three X plus four, and then we'll put three X squared minus three X times four plus four X squared. Okay. So that's just using this formula again, that bottom formula to help me, um, set up my factored polynomial. Now it's time to reduce. So see if we can simplify this a little bit. End up giving me 9x squared minus 12x plus 16. Okay. If I look at these, um, if I look at this tri trinomial, you'll end up finding this is also not factorable. Okay. So my final answer would be right here. Let's move on to 5x cubed minus 20x. Again, I need to start off by looking for my GCF here. Do they have anything in common? Yes, they actually have a 5 in common. What else do they have in common? They have an x in common. So now we, we're coming across a situation where we have a GCF that's other than 1. What do we do with that? Well, we're going to rewrite it. 5x is our GCF. We're going to pull it out. And now I need to rewrite these terms based off of having divided out or factored out that GCF. Well, if I factored out, right, I have 5x. I'm going to be left with just x minus whatever 20x divided by 5x is. Let me color coordinate it. I want to make this different. Okay. Well, what does that give me? That should give me a 4. Ooh, and I missed something. There we go. That x squared. Okay, because I only factored out 1x. I'm still left with 2x's in the inside. So now if I look in the inside, I want to see, well, is this factorable? Um, you'll end up finding that this is, in fact, factorable because we have a subtraction sign and we have two square terms. So this is a difference of squares situation. So I would need to know what my a is. My a would then be x and my b would be 2, right? Because that's given by that information. And now I can rewrite it. So it'd be x minus 2 times x plus 2. This is my final answer. Three more, y'all. Three more. We can do it. Okay, let's work on uh, this last, I mean, this bottom piece. I want to see if there's a GCF. Um, looks like there is of x, so we're going to pull out that x. I should be left with x squared plus x minus 12. That's, again, by dividing out an x from each one and placing it on that outside piece. We're just factoring it out. 
Okay. Um, now we're going to look on the inside and see, okay, well, is that factorable? Um, the answer for this one is yes. So um, we're going to go through the process. Notice that there is a, co a leading coefficient of one. So we're just going to be using that X method. Okay. If, the, if we had a leading coefficient of something other than one, there's a possibility that we would have to do the X method plus split the middle method. Okay. Just keep that in mind. All right. So X method, A times C. So that's negative 12 times my B value, which is um, one. So what two numbers multiply together to give me negative 12 and add together to give me one. If you've got negative three, four, you are correcto. Okay. So we can rewrite this as X times X minus three times X plus four. Okay. This is my final answer for this one. Two more, y'all. Two more. We can do it. Okay. So look to see if we have a GCF. We don't have a GCF here outside of a one, so we move on to special patterns. Here I see a cube, so it's a possibility that we're dealing with some type of special pattern dealing with cubes, and here it's a subtraction sign, so if anything, it might be a difference, right, because we're dealing with subtractions, difference of cubes, but we need to double check, okay? We would need to know what our A and our B values are that would make that difference of cubes formula true. So what value when I cube it is going to give me y cubed? Well, y is. And what value when I cube it is going to give me 64? Well, 4 is. So now I can rewrite this. I can rewrite this as y minus 4 times. And this is where we start using that formula that was here at the top. I'm hoping that you guys are catching on to that. We're using that formula, which is the um, difference of cubes. That's the second one. So using that second formula, we're going to end up getting y squared plus y times 4 plus 4 squared. We can then rewrite this to get y minus 4 times y squared plus 4y plus 16. If you were to try to factor out y squared plus 4y plus 16, um, you'd end up finding that this is not factorable. So this then is our final answer. Okay. All right. Last one, then we're done, Zo. This one happens to be probably the harder one, okay? But not too bad, not too much. Um, so here, we would look for a GCF. There's no GCF other than one, so we'll just put one, okay? Now we look to see if there's any special patterns. Well, there's three terms, and all these other ones typically only have two, two terms, right? They're binomials that are either perfect squares or perfect cubes. So that doesn't fall under any of those categories, which means we have to deal with it by that third step, which is, again, the trinomial. But remember how I told you guys if I have a lead coefficient that's other than one, I need to use what two methods? I need to use X method and split the middle method. So we're going to do just that. Starting with the X method. X method is A times C, so that'll be 12. My B value is 7. What two terms? When I multiply them together, it gives me 12. When I add them together, it gives me 7. If you said 3 and 4, you're correct. Okay, now we're not done. We can't set it up because we have to use split the middle method. We use the split the middle split the middle method by applying that three and that four in order to rewrite that seven x. So instead it would be three x plus four x. We bring down that four. We bring down that three x squared. And now I'm going to be able to factor by grouping. So oops, I forgot the plus sign right here. So I group them together nice and nicely to do the split the middle method. And then I'm going to divide out a GCF in each of these new um, set of parentheses. So here I can divide out a 3x from each one. So I'll end up with 3x on the outside and have 
x plus 1. And now I need to divide on this side as well. So I divide out a 4. So I'll get plus 4, and on the inside I'll get x plus 1. From a while back ago, we would have said, hey, if these two numbers on the inside, I mean, or if those two uh, pieces on the inside, the parentheses, if they're the same, then we've done our work correctly. And then we can group it nicely. We'd put 3x plus 4. So the GCFs are now being combined. And we're multiplying it by that x plus 1 that was also combined, okay? Um, from here, you would check again to see if any of these are factorable, but you're going to find that none of them are factorable. So our final answer for this last piece is that 3x plus 4 times x plus 1. All right, that is the end of this first lesson. I know I went pretty fast, but if you, for some reason or another, didn't understand it, please know that this... Um, this video is going to be available on Google Classroom, so you can always watch it at a later time. Um, another thing that I want to mention to y'all is that you guys will be having a quiz on this um, topic, as well as the other topic that I'm going to be creating a video on. Um, the bright side is that it is going to be open notes. Not all teachers are going to be um, having open notes, but because I'm gone for this lesson, I thought that I would um, make it open notes for y'all. Um, obviously, I would suggest um, try not so much to rely on notes, but they're going to be there for you for you to use, but you need to take those notes, okay? Um, so outside of that, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!